those Mexicans are heading for the United States side of the border. There are real problems about permitting unrestricted immigration into a welfare state. It's one thing when people come for jobs and are on their own, as was the case for most of American history. It's another thing when a welfare system will support them come what may, at the expense of other people. Yet look what happens when you try to interfere with market forces. Well, there's several fairly large groups of aliens on the hillsides waiting toward the dark to set in. Other groups that are still on the Mexican side of the border. They'll be coming in shortly, I imagine. We have electronic sensors buried in along the hillsides and along the most traveled trails to alert us when there's alien crossings. And from the sensor, we work ahead of them, try to head them off. No, they're right on the fence. They're just walking east. Yeah, it's 10 for Okay, you got about, well, I'd say hundreds or so here. Thank you, Fox Run. This is not a case of good guys against bad guys. The officers are simply trying to do their duty. The poor Mexicans are driven by hunger and attracted by the prospect of jobs. You do good work. The law enforcing people have an impossible job. They're going to run. They're going to get picked up, sent back, but sooner or later they're going to make it. Time at one minute after the next, you know. In one month in 1978, 60,000 illegal immigrants were arrested on this stretch of the border. But, believe it or not, the Border Patrol estimated that nearly 200,000 found their way through to places like this in Northern California, where there was work waiting for them. Illegal Mexican immigrants are not cheap labor around here. Many earn more than the minimum wage law demands. They can do so because farmers need many extra hands during the harvest season, and there's a shortage of domestic labor available. Jill Hannum and her partner run a farm that produces plump California raisins. And there's pending legislation which would uh, make it illegal for farmers to hire uh, undocumented workers, uh, and supposedly would impose a $1,000 fine per worker on, on the farmer. I can't imagine that it would actually go through. If it did, there'd be a full-scale farmer's revolt around here. It's... Matter of fact, last year, there was quite a bit of activity in the uh, Kerman area, which is about 15 miles west of Fresno. Many of the farmers banded together and as much as warned the Border Patrol to stay off their property. And they were willing to uh, back that up with guns, I'm afraid. They were very upset about it and because their situation was desperate. They needed the workers, and they needed the work to be, to be done now. And the Border Patrol uh, was interfering with that as they saw it. Violence by employers to assure the availability of workers is no more justifiable than violence by trade unions to assure their members' jobs. But violence is one of the things you are very likely to get when you try to prevent a deal between people who have jobs to offer and people who are looking for jobs. Fifteen years ago, the economy of Spartanburg, South Carolina, was stagnant. It depended on peaches and cotton. Wages were lower than the national average, and unemployment was higher than the average. Then, dramatically, the picture changed. The people in Spartanburg decided to make their town a center of free trade. They did this by using a new right-to-work law, eliminating many restrictions on labor. The city council cut taxes to the bone. They advertised the fact that Spartanburg was a place worth investing in. By any standards, let alone Spartanburg, the result was revolutionary. Industrialists came from Germany, Switzerland, all over the world to build factories to set up plants. 
The workers of Spartanburg clearly benefited from the new industries. The first to notice were the people who owned and ran the traditional industries. In terms of the business, it, it has been a, a problem for us. It means that we've got to be on our toes. We've got to be sure that we are uh, uh, providing a good workplace, that we are providing good jobs and what have you, and that we are uh, running as competitively as possible. I think that from the workers' point of view, this has certainly provided them with more opportunities to, uh, to for a market for their product, their, their labor, their, their expertise. Suddenly, in a free market, workers who once could not find jobs were now at a premium. Everyone benefited, workers and employers alike, and the town thrived. One of the workers who arrived in Spartanburg was Mr. Juma. He came as a refugee from Idi Amin's Uganda. We came in this country just with $139. I had a family, my wife and two kids. And, uh, as soon as, and we came with only four bags of clothing, which weighs about 40 pounds each bag. We were not allowed to take more than that. We have to leave all our possession, all our property in the Uganda. And myself, I just came down to Flowers Baking Company, and I was hired as a, a laborer to work in the plant at two dollars forty nine cents per hour. Thank you. Five years later, he was chief accountant of the company. In a free market, his best protection, his real wealth, turned out to be his skills and his desire to use them. America has to offer me a lot of things. This is a great country. I came in this country penniless. Today I own a house, I own three cars, my wife has got a good job, I myself have got a good job, and the children are schooling, and everything has been working so fine. I believe this is because of the opportunity. This is whoever wants to work in this country, there's a lot of opportunity. When unions get higher wages for their members by restricting entry into an occupation, those higher wages are at the expense of other workers who find their opportunities reduced. When government pays its employees higher wages, those higher wages are at the expense of the taxpayer. But when workers get higher wages and more civilized working conditions through the free market, when they get them by firms competing with one another for the best workers, by workers competing with one another for the best jobs. Those higher wages are at nobody's expense. They can only come from higher productivity, greater capital investment, more widely diffused skills. The whole pie is bigger. There's more for the worker, but there's also more for the employer, the investor, the consumer, and even the taxpayer. That's the way a free market system distributes the fruits of economic progress among all the people. That's the essence of the age of the worker. The discussion is already underway here at the University of Chicago, so let's join it. Well, we tried a free market system without labor unions. Uh, we tried it back in the 19... 20s and into the 30s, and it led the world into the biggest economic disaster it's ever seen in modern times. Now, I don't think we're talking free market or labor unions. We're talking free market with or without labor unions, and a free market system without labor unions is a total disaster.